Hello, beautiful people, beautiful humans. We're going to do another video together today. I have a brand new microphone, so I hope my volume is better than it was. And I have really good lighting and it's gloomy outside, so I'm getting no help there. But today I want to help you set up a mandala. I've been drawing tons of mandalas and I want to give you the idea of how I start them and kind of the ability to create one yourself, because it is truly such a meditative practice. And I'm finding that even in doing them in the work of it itself, it's just such a nice calming place to be. So if that's something that can help your day or make things a little bit easier, I want to give you those skills to do that. So what I'm using is I've got a blender stick. Um, it's like smooshed cardboard. It's not one of the ones that looks like you can unwind it. It is just kind of unclear how that close for you, but the dark end is graphite already on it. So when you get yours new, it'll be white. I'm also using, this is a 602. This is a black wing pencil. Um, I love them because they go from a 2B probably to a 6B, a 7B on the same pencil. So love that about this. But you also could use a number two and you could use like a number four, Later, if you want to go ahead and color it or, you know, shade it with graphite. Fancy makeup brush. This is great because you're going to get all this black graphite. And this is good for brushing. So you're not going to just smear it. And then I have a kneaded eraser, one of those fun pulling kind of erasers. It's K-N-E-A-D-E-D -E -E if you don't have one, but those are great. Those are my tools. I am going to share my screen with you so you can see all my stuff over here. Okay. And wow, Beatles mouse pad. All right, let me make this full screen for you. Okay. So that might be distracting, huh? Let's get this here. All right. So here is the basic setup for this. I've got a piece of paper and I'm using um, cardstock. Got a big, huge packet of it for like 11 bucks at um, Target. So that was great. So what I'm doing is I am taking this blender stick and I'm really saturating it with graphite. You can see how much graphite that shine is just how much graphite is built up on here. So when it gets really shiny like that, it's you've almost worn it all away. So I'm moving over here maybe putting a little bit more on here just to build up some graphite. Okay. So when I hit my paper, what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand down like this and my hand's kind of like an anchor for my starting point. So we're going to do a circle and I start like just reaching out kind of as far as my hand can go. I have not lifted this part of my hand up. So I'm just creating that outward arc. That's it. So that's the beginning of my circle. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just moving my hand to a different place. And I'm just kind of trying to find where that arc is. I kind of know about how big I want to make it. So this is a little not perfect circle. That's okay. Just go out. I'm not starting a really huge one today. I just want to give you the idea of how I start these things. So it can be super messy. And I'm finding the circle. Okay, so here's a big bump. No worries. All right. So say that is my starting circle. Now what I want to do is I'm kind of, say, eyeballing a line here, maybe here, here. I'm trying to find the center of this. I'm looking at the screen. This is always dangerous. I'm not looking at my work. Okay. All right. So roughly... I'm going to put a center there. So that is roughly where I'm going to start with this. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my pencil right now. And the only thing I'm really concerned about is locating maybe in the center of this. I'm putting a dot right there. And all that's going to let me do is very lightly I've got my pinky kind of down. I'm floating up a little bit. I'm not drawing a straight line like in school, like when you write your name and you press hard. I'm using my pinky kind of as a stand here. And I'm just 
drawing a line over really light. But this is the difference between making a freehand mandala and making one that is made by a compass or a protractor. So now that I kind of have that, I'm just going to blur it out. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just, I don't want it to be so perfect. I don't want my left brain to get involved yet and go, oh, that's not great. And that doesn't work. So I'm avoiding all of that by using this blender, because when you're using a blender, I'm going for form more than I'm going for that outer line. So for instance, I'm going to do a fish. And I, I thought about this earlier. I want to do a fish. So this is my first go at a fish. So, well, all right, let's look. Here's a fish, right? That That's not difficult to do with a blender stick. Let me do it so you can see it. So there's a fish, right? So I want the fish that we're going to do in this be a little bit more interesting. So if I take the fish and do it like this, and maybe the tail is down here, and there's a fin, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. With the blender stick, when you draw this, you don't get involved in this kind of stuff, which is all the details that you're going to put on later that are going to help your audience really understand, oh, you're telling me it's a fish, you know, maybe something like this. Okay. So that's all the details. And you kind of have to know what a fish looks like. But when you're doing this, even without that, that's not that difficult, right? That's all we're going for, this very symbolic stuff. So I'm using the blender. I'm going to put in another circle. And now I'm just gauging the different, the distance from here to here and kind of matching the same curve. And I'll try and keep my hand out of the way. So let's go this way. I'm gonna come around this way. So all I'm doing is trying to get this rough distance from here to here, here to here, the same. Checking that. Yep. It kind of looks circular. Perfect. Looks like a big bullseye or the target symbol. So got that. And let's say we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna put a tighter circle. This is really a small mandala. And the smaller they are kind of in a way, the harder they are to work in because they're so teeny. But I wanna give you just the idea of what this looks like. So now I'm gonna say, okay, committed to, I kinda know that this line is roughly in the right place. So I'm gonna sketch in with my pencil and I'm using this very lightly. Again, the nice thing about using the 602, which is the black wing is I can get it to go really dark, but I also can really put it down lightly. It's not digging into the paper. It's not, there's not a lot of slate in this. It's a really nice soft way to work. And I, and I truly do love these pencils. So I'm also going to try and find that outer line and I'm pulling a line. And what I mean by that is I'm doing this with it. I'm not committing like this. That's a really hard line. I can erase it, but you can see it. Where on this, I just want to just touch the surface of the paper. Helps to, to rotate it. And again, I'm just using my hand kind of as what is allowing me to draw that curve. I go down as far as my hand can go. I lose my integrity. When I get down here, I can't do that same line for the curve. So I'm just using kind of my hand and I'm always eyeballing the distance of here to here, here to here, a little ahead of myself, just to make sure that I'm about right. Checking this to over here visually, pretty close. This is my wobbly part, but all right, there you go. That big crash in the background was my cats. I wonder what that was. We'll find out later. Okay. There it is. That's the beginning of this mandala. I'm not doing anything in the center because I truly don't know it's going to be there yet. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. The great thing about these is if you remember, um, uh, what was that? Silly putty. That's what these are like. So say I have a big area here, shading. What I can do with these is I can go in and really lift up all that graphite just to leave that shading. I still can erase through it. If I really wanna go down to nothing here, I can erase all this out. 
not a great job, but I would get a different eraser of which is at the bottom. I have pencil cup. Look at this. And of course, the erasers at the bottom where it shouldn't be, but there it is. Making sure my edge is clean. Going to get all that up. All right. So needed eraser. I'm going to go in and I'm lifting out some of the graphite that I put down, mainly so it doesn't smear everywhere. But I want to lighten up those lines. So now what I have is I have four quadrants to this little pizza shape thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, say, let's do a flower. I'm going to pop it right in that center section like this. So now I know I have four equal sections and I have this flower. So it's easier if you can divide the sections down again. So I'm just going to free line another line out, making sure that these quadrants are pretty similar. Same thing over here, just coming from that center. And then over here. So in a way, this flower with its four petals is kind of acting as the holder. It's a seed. So there's four petals, but there's also these other rays that are coming out. So think about these rays as these things that are going to continue out for infinity out from here. They're, they're emanating from the center, right? And so if you were going to do this and you were going to start an intention or you wanted to put something into this where you're not just drawing a picture, you're also building this as a meditation symbol for yourself later. If you're going to use it as that, they work brilliantly for that too. Also, while you're drawing it, it becomes very meditative when you're coloring. But in the drawing of them, I kind of like to put in something. So today I'm going to do gratitude. That's always a, a great thing. And I'm just meaning by intention, meaning that that's the intent I have when I'm drawing this. So I'm in kind of that state. I'm not agitated. I'm not really thinking about what I'm grateful for, but I'm just thinking gratitude and, and, and also a fish. So however, those two things are good. I'm grateful for fish there. So let's go back to the fish now. So with that, holding that idea of gratitude, I want to do a fish in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is the shape I want to do a fish. So I'm going to put the curl in, say, of my fish right here. It's right next to this line. And it looks like a C, okay? So that's this. That's what I'm going to put in is here is what I'm doing. Here's that C shape. That's where I've got that. So I'm just going to go around. That C shape is going to fit right next to the line all the way around. So that's what makes it a repetitive pattern is the fact that everything you do is going to repeat all the way around. So the great thing about this is if the first fish doesn't look great, you have like six other tries, right? It's going to look perfect at the end. So here's my fish shape. So all I'm going to do is go down. I'm going to kind of make a fancy little fin here and then make a fish. And maybe you can put an eye and I'll go ahead and put that fin in. So that's my fish shape. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the same, but I'm going to copy it put it in like maybe little koi fish they look like at this point I'm not too worried about putting the gills in but that's what they would look like and then you would just take that all around so maybe you're thinking all right so a fish and maybe bubbles so I'm going to put in three bubbles here so again you're just going to repeat that over here and you're gonna do that all the way around. So to section this off, I need to have that line in there, but my little fins kind of break into that line and I like that. So maybe I'll put my line in, but I'll leave the fish, their little fins on the top, kind of protruding above that. These things are still super gray and I'm not worried about that. I'm just getting the shapes in. This fin tail thing is way too big. So later I'll come in and correct this. I like this one better. So you're gonna self-correct as you work around it. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, okay. So now in this next line, I'm gonna put some waves in because waves make me think of fish. 
And now that I look at this, I didn't even think about this, but this kind of reminds me of a sand hour. So in a way I'm like, okay, then I could even take if I wanted to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of draw a jagged line about this because I like the idea of making that a shape in itself, the center. And I didn't even see that when I started. So when I'm talking to you, I'm going into my left brain to pull out, you know, pull the words out. And then I'm drawing, which puts me in a weird place because it's hard for me to do both at the same time. If you walk into a room full of artists, usually it's quiet because you can't like do both. You can either draw or talk. So when I'm doing these, I don't have a set idea. You could absolutely have a book or a reference your phone that has a bunch of fish things or underwater things to help you do this, but I'm not, I'm just free forming this because this isn't going to be artwork necessarily. I just want this to be something that is repetitive so that I can kind of get my brain to calm down, get out of that talking space and into just that creative awareness. So that that's what I'm looking to do with this right now. So now I'm going to say, all right, love these little points. Let's connect up like this maybe. So that gives me the second tier. And I would repeat that same thing over here. I would just do those waves, I'm not worried if it's the same amount, because again, this is a free form one. We didn't measure this out, but that's going to go all the way around and put that in and make. And obviously, the more careful you are with these, the more um, symmetrical it's going to work. I'm not really worried about this perfection. I kind of like that imperfection thing. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put in another fish, try and do better on that tail. Here's this. Love that little fin sticking up. Okay. Maybe put like little lips on it, whatever. All right. And I'm going to put my bubbles in. So let's say that I'm done, that I have most of the stuff in, that I like the way this looks. How do I bring this up now so that I could finish it? So as you're doing this, just from doing so many of these, it's a really good idea if you finish one, like if I would do all the fish around, then do all the bubbles, then do all of this, because the more complex they get and the more sections you put in, it's harder to remember what you did. And a lot of times I'm finding I will have left sections out. So not in this one, because this is relatively simple, but in the more complex ones. So now to finish this. So I'm looking at all these different shapes. I really like this. It kind of looks like a big flower that's going to be forming in here. And if these things are going to be white, I really want to make this dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this pencil. And I'm lightly committing to saying, all right, I kind of want this area to be dark back here. And you can see how by making this dark, it automatically really pushes these petals, let's call them that out. So now I can go in and say, all right, with this same pencil, I'm pressing a little bit harder, and I'm really going to fish those petals out and outline them. Ha <laughs> ha, fish the petals out, get it? Okay, that was just bad, but. There you go. So I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in underneath like this. So when you're doing something that is symmetrical like this, my assumed light source is going to be right here. It's going to be emanating from the center out. So if you think about you have a light source like this and you have an object, say here's my petals like this, that is why I get to put that shadow in. The shadow is going to fall opposite the light source. So if this is my center, I can put a shadow around all of these underneath. I know that globally for every single one of these, I can put that shadow in along here. And what that shadow does, it just allows me another way to tell you, the viewer, that, hey, this is a little bit of depth right here. Now I'm going to go back in. And I'm really going to, there's a line here, right? This line going through. I'm going to avoid this though, because I like the way at first that started out waves and now it's something different, but I'm going to go in and I'm just going to make this dark. This isn't really dark, 
it's kind of a mid-range gray. So I'm putting that in, I'm gonna commit to this bottom down here. So again, pulling that line around. And then in here, got this outlining the petals. You certainly could put more petals in here. I kind of like the way this is just a pattern of lines. And again, you would be completing this all the way around. So in general, happy with this. Kind of looks like a little inner tube. It's got a flower. It isn't the most coherent thing in terms of underwater or fish. I'm not worried about that. I want to put a little bit more design element in. So I'm taking and I'm putting another line out from this petal. So I would do that too, all the way around. Because whatever you do in one, you want to keep doing the other. And then I'm going to put a triangle in here and I'm going to fill that triangle in and make it dark. So same thing here, putting another triangle in there. So all I'm doing in each one of these sections is I'm putting a triangle of darkness into it. And some it's gonna come right up under the flowers. I'm gonna continue this around so that you can see what I'm doing with this. So just a dark triangle behind each one of these into that same triangle. So here's my triangle. I'm just putting a dark one in the center of it. So it just breaks up that background a little and it gives me a little more pop to what's going on in that center. It pushes out these parts. It makes this recede because it's dark. It's still not black. It's still this mid-range gray. So I'm allowing the fact that I'm not quite sure what's happening in here. So I'm letting that unfold a little more organically. I'm going to go ahead and fill this section in too so that you get a better idea of what's going on down here. All right. So officially, officially, this is now that it looks terrible phase. It's it's okay, but this is still wobbly. It, it's still, there's not really any wow to this yet. Gonna finish that line off a little better, outline that fish, making sure I'm getting rid of all of the white spaces. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this blender and I'm going over to my paper and I kinda, of, I'm wiping it off just a little. I'm getting that built up graphite off of it. And now I'm gonna go in and they make these smaller. This is really a tight little area and you might wanna get a smaller one. I'm doing little teeny circles with this, like this, just kind of a chain of little teeny circles. And what I'm doing is I'm just burnishing or blending down this graphite you can see where I've done it, it kind of settles down. You don't notice all those white streaks. So I'm getting rid of all of those white streaks. Going over to this area. And now what I'm gonna do, I kind of wanna play with the idea that these are petals a little bit. So I'm gonna go into the center and I'm just dropping in. You can see where I'm pulling. I'm just putting a little bit at that very, the beginning of these and kind of fading it out. And again, what I'm doing is playing with that gradient and these are all mid-tones. So mid-tones, black, white, and then these are in the middle, kind of mid-grays. But you can see how that's starting to differentiate these as petals or whatever, whatever they are, these strange shapes. So now that I've done that, the only other thing that I have that I forgot to mention at first is this. This is a mono zero eraser. It's a teeny little eraser. Um, mine's almost gone. Let's see if I've got one. I'm pushing down the end of this, pulling this out, but it's an eraser. And it just, it's like a mechanical pencil, but it's an eraser. And the great thing is you can get into these tight little spaces and erase everything out. So I'm gonna go into these and I'm gonna kind of go back in and lift out a little of that gray. I like it in there, but I want kind of a, a little more uneven. And this allows me to really get in tight into these areas. So when you're drawing, an eraser is so not for erasing mistakes. It's for putting white back in in a really precise way. 
So now I'm using my brush, make sure I get all those little things off. And now I can go in and maybe put in some lines into the center. And this is where you're gonna really start being able to create something different with this. Say on every other one, just decide, I'm gonna put a circle in. So it might not end up even, you might end up with two circles together as you go all the way around, but that isn't really the part that matters. It's, it's really the fact that you're just repeating patterns. Maybe I don't even put the same amount of circles around as I go. But it's, it's just starting to really give it more interest. I'm going into my little fish here. And now I'm going to commit to this little fish, maybe put some fins in here, some lines in for its tail, and maybe another little fin down here and make its eye a little bigger. So there's my fish. It's got a lot of gray in it. So I'm going to go in and just lift that out, bring it back so that it's white again. And then I like the idea where I had first put in that line. I'm going to curve it a little bit because I do like the way this is looking like an inner tube. And I'm going to say, let's, and, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's going to work well. I'm thinking about just putting like a stripe in right here. This was a straight line. I'm going to curve it and throw that stripe in over here. And again, you'd repeat that all the way around. Keep completing this as you go. Keep working on the fish. Again, they're going to get better as you practice them around. So here's my tail that I didn't like. So I'm going to change that here. Still not really keen on it, but it looks like he's got a little hand. Look at that. That's kind of weird. All right. So anyways, there's my poor little fish. And he's also going to have that curl, curved line. So tightening these up a little, bringing them out a little bit more. I want to put something in here. See how this is a really big space? There isn't that same space here, and it's certainly not here. So when I'm looking at that, I think, wow, there's a huge space here. But since I don't have it in the other places, because my little pie shapes aren't even like this one is much smaller than this one. Just make sure that you kind of anticipate around where you can pop things in. Because for instance, I can't do that over here. So probably what I would do here is just add some more bubbles and maybe put some of this in, maybe tuck one in here. And now that's making this much more interesting down here than it was, and it's kind of pulling that out. This is a crazy Mandela, but it's working because it's starting to get more interesting. So here at the very edges, I'm really gonna pop some dark in just to separate those out. So you can see by adding this, it's creating a little bit more texture here. Maybe in the ones that are without the circles, I'm gonna pop in those lines. And this is all, see there, I just did one with the lines because I'm looking at my screen. So now when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, I'm liking the way this is really coming into here. I really wanna drop this down in darkness and I can't really go darker with this. You can see if I press on this a little bit, but not a lot. Oh, there's Jack in the background. Hi, Cat Cat. So I'm going to erase out my original flower. This is the center. So I really want to pop this up and have this white. So what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to put a little bit of shading in with the pencil here. And that really forces that center flower out. Because so anytime you put white and dark together, it's, it's going to dark recedes, light comes forward. So I'm taking this now and I'm just pulling out that from underneath the flower where I put those areas in. You can see that's really forced that out. So now that's made me think, all right, great, love it. So I'm really gonna go in with those lines, the, the same center line that's here, but I've kind of lost it where I put that gray in. 
So really gonna pull that out again. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to the same pencil, except this is the matte. So this is black, this is really jet black. So that's going to give me the um, contrast now in this. And that really makes the huge difference on these is once you have it kind of established, what you want to go in now and is really pay, play with the contrast and see what you can do to make it look really three-dimensional. So while this in here is still kind of a mess, not quite sure what to do with this, I do know that down here, I want this darker. So now when I put this in, you can see I can get very dark with this down here. I'm gonna go into all these little points, really separate these out a little bit. This is where it just becomes, <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing. So he's right there in the corner. He's probably too small for you to see, but he's trying to get in the door. That's Jack. So pushing this darkness in, and now you really can see how that is forcing what look like flower petals out. And that's what's giving it this great depth down in here now. So I'm going to go in with the dark and I'm separating. I'm just pulling back out each of my petals again. So you can see how it's separating them. It's lessening the confusion down here because I'm giving your eye a pattern to see. So the more I go in and pull those out, these look very separated. These are still very much together. So down here, this is still really messy. I love the darkness and I love how it goes in. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just change these to small triangles instead of just that black that they were. They were just kind of squiggles. So by doing this, I'm giving you, again, another repeating pattern. Here's a big triangle. Here's a smaller triangle. But they're all pointed triangle shapes. And that's giving you, again, a pattern. So that becomes a little bit more meaningful, not in the sense of um, it means something to you, but the sense that visually when you look at it, because you recognize the pattern, your eye flows along and it becomes more visually interesting. That's a better way of putting that. So with these now, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. So I guess I'm playing with this one on the idea of circles. But that now it's adding something different. And you can see as this whole thing goes around, it becomes a flower in a way, but it's also forcing this shape up higher. So I really want to play with that too. So I'm going to go in and I'm not going all the way out to the edges. I'm going into the center of these triangles, which is tucked kind of underneath this. And I'm really forcing that darkness right up under the flower. And that's really just pushing it out again. So all my lines connecting, really forcing that out. And I'm just looking for balance in this myself. Okay, this is dark. That one looks okay. This one may be a little bit out. But once you do that all the way around, you're going to start losing other important lines. Like I've really lost the petals. So I'm just going back in with the dark and really bringing them out again. And again, the idea of this is not any kind of perfection. The idea of this is just starting to recognize patterns. It's a great way to practice stuff. And it's a great way to work on shading too, because you're not doing anything. You may or may not even keep this or like it. It's just a start. So there's my shape. Going to go in maybe and make these. I can go back in and change all of these so they have a definite even a petal feel to these. So this is how it's gonna morph and change as you're working with it. And that's a beautiful thing about pencil. It's so forgiving. So with this, I'm gonna take my blender, again, those little circles, and I'm gonna go in and kind of get rid of all this fuzzy stuff at the ends and pull it out just a little bit. And that's really sending this down underneath. Maybe even a little bit more. But can you see how that's made this such a three-dimensional, strange-looking thing? It really has depth. And is the idea, anytime you're shading something, 
this area right here where it's white, you can see it's not quite dark. You want to, I always think of this as tucking things in. You know, like when you plant plants, you want to tuck them into the ground and kind of push that dirt down into them. It's the same thing here. Don't leave your viewer with this ambiguous, is it dark or is it light? If you're going to make their eye force down into this darkness, which is what I really want to do is push this up and push this area down, make sure that this is uniformly black. It's not ambiguous. And now when I do that, you, you're going down deep into this hole and it's visual, but this really does look more three-dimensional than when we started. You can see over here, I still can tell it's sitting on the surface of a paper, but when I start pushing it down, it starts giving you, the viewer, this idea that, well, maybe it's a lot deeper in there. What, what is down in here? And it's interesting to your eye. So now what I'm going to do back here is I love this little fish, maybe put some lines back here behind this, um, really like the bubble idea. So I'm going to play that up a little bit and just make a lot. I can take that little tambo and I'm going to go in, in the center of my bubbles, I'm just going to lift it out to white. And then maybe I'm gonna take my blender and just go back in and put a little bit of shading on my fish. Maybe make his tail. It's fanning outside a little bit. I'm not perfectly in the fish, but it's giving the fish a little three-dimensionality because this is shaded here. I'm thinking, all right, maybe over here for a little contrast, I'm just gonna go in and put a little of the shading in the background over here. And now it's looking almost like, um, I don't know, like an octopus or something, you know, those little suctiony things. So that makes me think, all right, in some of them where they're big enough, I could just toss a little circle. It doesn't have to be in all of them, but it's all this little finicky detail now that you're going to put in that really is going to make this interesting. So as you go along and do this, maybe every other one. But it's the design of this now. And you're just going to do the same thing as you go around. And this is what I meant earlier. When you get to these little things like this, it's helpful if you've had all this other in, because then when you do these things, you're just going to go do it all the way around and you're getting this consistent design. So here, love this little edge here. And now what I'm going to do is tip it a little. I'm committing to my edge. So I would go all the way around and I'm just, again, my hand is super stable and I'm just pulling along that curve. I really can't comfortably go anymore with my hand. So I'm turning it and you're going to go all the way around and you're going to finish it with this kind of ending, that tight line there. So another thing that you can do too is another piece of paper. I'm tipping it. I don't want to put my hand on this to draw because it's going to smear like crazy. But if you want now, I can kind of eyeball a bunch of dots, say, roughly away from here. And I'm just going to pull again, connect. If you want to increase it in size, you don't have to use the dots. They're really helpful, though, if you haven't done this a lot. And again, it's not going to be perfect. This thing isn't even a perfect circle. But that way, you can see how you could really put a nice finishing onto this, can go in with this. I'm going to put a little mid-tone gray in here with my blender, not perfectly, not all the way. And then I'm going to take this, which is the black, and I'm going to go in and maybe scallops, maybe that would be cute. So I'm just going to put little scallops down here. And again, I would do that all the way around making sure they're black, getting rid of all of that. And then because I've smeared it a bit, I'm just gonna go back over, put that line in darker. So I'm pressing pretty hard with that. And that, that's how I would finish that. Or you could put another circle out. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, okay, lost my fish a little in this because I put so much added detail in. So I'm just going to pop it out a little bit more. 
and maybe put some speckles in. And all I'm doing by that is just putting my eraser down and twisting it. So just lifting it out a little. I want to kind of smash that gray in, sharp pencil point, and then put some fins or the gills in. So that fish doesn't really stand out. And maybe the fish wasn't the best choice in here. But this is stuff that you're going to find out as you're moving along and doing it. And the point is the whole thing is done so that you're able to get into this creative space. It's, it's just a lovely practice. I've been doing one or two of these a day. And when I sit down to it now, I've noticed that, um, oh, let me, I want to, <laughs> I am unable to focus on talking and doing this, which for me, talking never is a problem. I also have a dual monitor and you're watching me try and find my top screen. Okay, stop, share, there we go. So it really does get you to this place where um, instead of getting, you know, like in the middle of the night, say uh, 3.30 seems to be a popular time when I'm not sleeping for an hour or so. I'm not gonna get up and go downstairs and draw a mandala, but I definitely start having some ideas for it. And so where for me that intention comes up is, if this was the only one I worked on today, either later on today or tonight, that, that kind of memory of the drawing feeling is in your hands. And when I sit down to draw again, or when my mind kind of goes at those early morning times, I'm really thinking of that, oh, I did that gratitude mandala, mandala. And then I think of Nelson Mandela. So I'm going to put a picture of him in, in my Instagram thing. And if you want to see all these um, videos or not the videos, the Instagrams, it's at Janet Balboa and I'm posting all the ones that I'm doing. So they're fun. I've got um, the ones that I'm working on today is this one. So I haven't thought what's in there. You can see I've got all these stars and stuff and kind of the sky that you're looking up at in the center. And I have two or three going at the same time because I'm not sure what I'm going to put in them. Some are absolute failures, some are brilliant. But for me, it's just, I really want to get into the practice. So I'm doing a hundred of them and we'll see. I want to know what it's like to be a person that's drawn a hundred of these. So that's my practice. And I want to do another video with this too, so that the color, because that's another really important point. So if you have a color wheel and you're thinking, all right, gratitude, maybe that brings up a color for you, um, fish. So blues, greens, um, you could put sea anemones in this. So don't stop with your imagination on it. As you're working with it, you're going to think of more things to put in it. And you're also going to start thinking about another one that you're going to do. And some mandalas are just all geometric shapes. That's great. So just let your creativity kind of go into that, but set up the circle with the blender and start it out really soft like that because you really check out that part of you that wants to criticize and wants to go, oh, I don't love this. And it may not look great. It may look okay and you may not love it, but not bad. And you can really see, even though I didn't intentionally set out to do a C shape, even though it is more flowerish, there's something very anemone-ish and very watery about this. And whether I kept it in graphite or in colored pencil, if I were going to do this in pencil, um, colored pencil or markers, I would have gotten a micron and I would have done it in um, India ink, my black areas, so that the graphite doesn't smear into all my beautiful colors, whether you're using Sharpies or Copic markers or whatever, or colored pencil all that graphite is gonna smear into your colors. So the setup would be once you're done with the, um, the blender, you can put your lines in lightly with pencil and then put them in with, this is the Micron, you, this is a pilot pen. Just make sure that whatever you're using, if you're gonna use watercolor, make sure you try it with these first so that they don't bleed into it. So once you get your line work down, then you go in with the kneaded eraser or your eraser and just lift that out and then you're good to color. But ideally we'll do a video on that too. But thank you. I'm pleased that you're watching and would love for you to comment um, on sound quality, all the technical stuff as well, if there's anything that you want to see. And then please follow me at Janet Balboa at 
Janet Balboa and um, tag along with me and watch the mandala process because it's fun. It's a very refreshing way to work. And I am sure I want to stop recording. Bye. Have a great, great, lovely day.